Well, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. Shalom. The blessings of the Lord be upon you all. I thank God for another day, another time, and the opportunity that we have uh, that we can go before uh, His people and deliver His awesome, mighty word. I thank the Lord for all the things that He has done for us this week. Uh, he's blessed us. Uh, we are yet still striving in the Lord. And uh, we're not giving up. Because God is good. Amen? Amen. And I know um, Pastor Michelle has asked a question when we first started. Has anybody been going through things? And uh, I've, I've heard it stated that there are two states for every believer. And that's going into a storm or coming out of a storm. Amen. And I, I, I can... I agree with that to a point. I don't think everything is storm all the time. He says in his word, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. And it's not always stormy. There are times when God's peace just calms that storm. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he has given you the ability to calm the storm. So don't think that everything is stormy, that you either get ready to go into something or you're just coming out of something and there's never going to be any peace because that's not how my God operates. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm a firm believer in that. One thing I do know is that, you know, we are constantly in some type of a battle. Um, I know even, like I said, I, those of you that know me, you know I love a good war movie. I'm, I'm, I'm a war movie fanatic. I love them all. And uh, even in the midst of war, you know, there still are times when the shells aren't falling, the bullets aren't flying, you know, there's no sniper up in a tree. There's times when there is peace and there's quiet, but you are still in a battle. And you have to realize mm. that there are times when you may get wounded. Amen. You may get wounded. I'll take care. Matter of fact, I'll go a little further. You will get wounded. Amen. You are in a good battle. You're going to get wounded. Something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the severity of the wound. You know, you may just get a little pinprick or you may get a limb missing. But you're going to get wounded from time to time. And I, 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 I have a heart for people I know that have gone and have, or, or, or have told me, you know, a certain church wounded them. And I have a, I, I, that, that, that bothers me. That when you have churches that wound people, um, there's something that is being taught, or there's something that's being done, or something that's being said that is not according to God's will. Because we who have to deliver that word, sometimes the word is harsh. It's not always good. It's not always, you know, easy to swallow, but it is good for you. Those of you who were young, I don't know how old some of y'all are, but I know some of y'all are definitely around my age. If you ever gotten sick or, or even to keep you from getting sick, my father used to give us a spoonful of what was called Father John's. Amen. Every morning. <laughs> it was horrible. Yes, you remember Father John? Oh, yeah. I remember Father John. We got cod liver oil. We got cod liver oil. And you got something that did not taste good at all, but what it did was it helped to fight off illness in your body. So some things may not taste good, but they are good for you. And I think that there are people that have been wounded by a church because they don't like what they've had to taste. Mm. They want it all to taste good. Not everything's going to taste good. But if you really look deep into the word that is really spoken, do like my former pastor used to say, eat the meat and spit out the bone. Utilize what is good for you in your situation and your circumstance. You who are wounded, you'll find a way to get up and keep on going. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the fallen soldier gets back up. And this is a major problem with a lot of believers 
who feel as though that the first time they fall, or the first time they do something or say something that causes them to say, oh, I'm no longer saved anymore, they want to stay down. God never expects you to stay down. He never said you were not going to be wounded. Amen. What he did tell you was you can get back up. You can get back in the fight. You have to rejoin the ranks because you cannot afford to stay down when God has got things for you to achieve. Amen. Amen. The battle gets hot. The battle gets heavy. But the fallen soldier can't get back up. How do you know that? Well, let's go to 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6. See, David, I think we said this before, David and his men have been warring with the Philistines. They have been on the Philistine side, actually warring against Saul and his army who was trying to kill him. The Philistines sent them back home because they did not want David and his men to turn against the Philistines in the midst of the battle because of David's still love and honoring of Saul. So when he sent them back home and all of his men, and they got back home to Ziklag, they found out that uh, the Malachites had destroyed everything. They had taken Ziklag, they had burned it to the ground, they had taken all of their children, all of their wives, all of their goods, they had taken everything. How would that make you feel? You come home and everything in your house is gone. Amen. <clears throat> everything. Amen. Gone. I've had my house broken into before. That was not a happy thing. You feel violated. You don't have any more peace. You don't have any more comfort. Someone has entered into your domicile that was not invited by you. And they took something that was dear to you, precious to you. Your heart falls. Sometimes the first thing you want to think of, well, I got to move. I got to give up. I got to get out of here. I can't take this no more. Mm -hmm. But the good soldier is going to stand. The good soldier is going to fight. We found that in David. It says, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. His men turned on him. And that's as they were saying, if we'd have been here instead of following you, leader, none of this would have happened. So we're going to kill you. This is how angry we are. It says, because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. David had to look beyond the fear factor. David had to look beyond the anguish. David, David lost everything just like everybody else. But he had to realize that he could not stay down any longer. He had to muster up some courage. He had to muster up some strength. He had to realize that God has done many things for me before and I know he'll do it for me again. I've killed a lion. I've killed a bear. I've killed a giant. And I've done all that through the strength of God. I could defeat this enemy that's taken all my stuff. When you read on it says that he went and they got back everything that was stolen and defeated the enemy. Child of God, I don't care how depressing things may seem to you. God wants you to stand firm. When you get knocked down, you can get back up. You never stay down. Amen. Get back up. Because God's got something in store for you. He's got blessings in store for you. You don't never let the enemy just take all your stuff. You used to shoot marbles. You ever shot marbles? Yeah. We used to have what's called the uh, well, we call it the bulgy, the big one. Yeah. And I remember I was shooting one day, man. And I had my bulgy, and I shot and missed. And they took all my marbles, took my bulgy. I had that bulgy for a long time. Mm -hmm. I had it all different colors and all swirling around. Took my bulgy. I was not happy. I go home crying. I'm, I'm crying. I got all my marbles. My oldest brother, Michael. Boy. You better go back out there. Don't let nobody just take your stuff. Here, take mine. I went, took his, went back out there, got my stuff back. See, this is how God will do you. When you've lost your will, when you've lost your faith, when you've lost your trust, God will give you a portion of his to help you to get back into the fight and be overcome. 
defending yourself in the Lord. You don't have to take a bunch of junk from the enemy. You have the ability to go back in and be a winner over every situation and every circumstance that ever wants to come your way. This is what he does. See, faith and courage are the keys to returning to the battle. You gotta have faith in God and you gotta have the courage to know that no matter what comes my way, no matter how hard it seems, no matter how fierce the battle is, I've been hurt, I've been hurt, I've been shot, but I got to get back in. Go to the wound station. Get passed up. Get back in the fight. I was, uh, I was in what was called a mash unit when I was, uh, yeah, whatever. well, I'm not mash, but a, kind of like a mash unit, a, a aerial port squadron. We would go out to the middle of a field and create an airport so that they could come in, land in, and deliver supplies, troops, anything at a moment's notice. Mass units are the kind of the same way, but they are medical. They'll go to the middle of anywhere and set up a hospital. See, they don't wait to get so far behind the lines. They're going to be right in the midst of where everything is happening so that when you get wounded, you can get your care right then, right there. God is here. He is your mass unit. He wants to be right in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your situation, and give you the aid you need in the midst of the fight so that you can win. Amen. And get back in that fight. Amen. He never expects you ever to give up, but he wants you back in there. See, faith knows that with Christ you can overcome any and all obstacles. With Christ... You can overcome any and all obstacles. These are things that are going to jump up in your way and cause you grief, cause you misery, cause you pain, make you want to turn around and go right back where you came from. But he's telling you to go forward, march, go into the midst of the battle. He's passed up your wound. You're not bleeding anymore. But see, we have the mental problem with the wound. We still want to feel that hurt. We still want to feel that pain. And he's already taken it away. So now it's time to wipe away the memory. Get back in the fight. Matter of fact, now it's time to get mad. Because you done been shot. Because you done been stabbed. Because he's taking your stuff. Now it's time to get back in there. And what do you need? You need courage. Courage enables us to face adversity when winning seems hopeless and impossible. And I guarantee you, there's going to be times when it doesn't seem as though you can win. Somebody has done something, someone has said something, things have arisen in your life, and it seems hopeless. Winless. I can't do it. It's not going to happen. But you need the courage to look beyond that obstacle, look beyond that negativity, and get into the fight with all of the strength and the power and faith that you need with Christ to be an overcomer. Because that's what he's made you. Amen. That's what he's telling you. The fallen soldier gets back up. You don't stay down. We all have got problems. We've all been under attack. We're up under attack right now, I think, more than we've ever been up under attack before. Amen. Because we're believing more in God. We're trusting in Him more. So the attack is getting fiercer. It's getting heavier. He doesn't want you to come to church. He doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you to fast. He doesn't want you to believe. He doesn't want you to light to shine. He doesn't want you to tell somebody else about God. He wants you to become so enamored with your wound that you won't seek the help you need in order to get back into the fight. Amen. 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 You've got to do this. Never let the enemy just knock you down and you stay down. I remember one particular fight I got into. And I have to admit, I didn't win. I, I got beat up. But one thing I didn't do is I didn't run. Amen. This guy, he was bigger than me. He came out of his house, and I stood there. 
we went out a little bit, he hit me, boom, 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 boom. I fell down, but I got right back up. He left. But I did, everybody thought I was going to leave and go home and go cry. No, I stood right there waiting for him to come right back out. And he came back out. We did it again. Boom, boom, boom. He beat me up. He left and went back in the house. I stayed right there. I'm, I must have thought I was crazy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, other people thought I was crazy too. You know. But I didn't lie. Amen. And I know inside I gained this man's respect because he never messed with me again. But I never, he didn't make me run. I stood there. When I had, when I had enough, I left. You ain't going to make me leave. I'll leave when I want to leave. I was hurt. <laughs> I was hurt. When I got back in the house, that's when I cried. I didn't cry for him. I cried when I got home. I was beat up pretty bad. But see, this is what God is telling you. Even in the midst of the fight, don't let the enemy see you cry. Amen. The enemy out loud, I ever see you were dejected, depressed, in a bad state because he's pouring his heaviness upon you. Stand. Oh, Jesus. He says, when you've done all to stand, you got to stand. You don't let the enemy mess you around, pump you out, send you home crying. No, you stand there. You're going to win some. Some battles you may lose. That's where the wound comes in. But God's telling you, get back in the fight. Because even though you may lose the battle, the war is already won. It's already on your side. You've already been given deliverance. But you got to fight. See, Joshua had been the assistant to Moses and he has seen God do wondrous things through Moses he was present during many times when God spoke to Moses when God used Moses and instructed him he was Moses and that's his right hand man he was being mentored by Moses and he was accepting that position but then there came a time when Joshua was placed in a very precarious situation. It was, came his time to lead the children of Israel. He had to lead them into the promised land without his mentor. He had to go in without his leader, Moses. And he did not feel as though that he was ready to take on this reins of leadership. So God had to encourage him. We find this in Joshua 1 and 8. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Let me tell you something. Nothing in the world like being told you now in charge. You're not given any warning. You just wake up one day and now, boom, it's all yours. What you going to do? You got well over three million people you got to leave. And they are all depending upon you. Your master, your leader, your friend, your mentor is gone. He's not just absent. He's just not on leave. He's just not on vacation. He did. <laughs> He's not coming back. It's on you. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I have given to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. As far as you can see, this is all going to be yours. Big responsibility, huh? No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. What a promise. He said that to Joshua. Don't you think he hasn't said the same thing to you? 
be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide it as an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Something I find that very fascinating. He said it twice. Be strong and be courageous. Then only be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go don't run don't run from it don't deviate if I tell you to go right you go right you don't go left if I tell you to go left you don't go right, you go left. If I tell you to go straight, you don't turn around and go backwards. You don't deviate from my instructions. Do what I tell you, and I promise you, you're going to have everything that I promised your leader. I'm giving it to you. Child of God, I'm telling you, everything God promised to Christ, he's promised to you. Amen. Come on now. Everything he's promised Christ, he promised you, you can't do no better than that. But you got to keep going. You cannot stop. You cannot give up. You cannot allow the enemy to take your toys. God gave them to you. They're yours. Got your name on them. They don't belong to nobody else but you. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe mm -hmm. to do according to all that is written in it. What is the book of the law? Your Bible, your instruction manual, your field guide. In the service, we have field manuals. Mm -hmm. Told you everything you needed to know out in the field. From how to pick the right food, how to, if you had to, skin an animal so you could eat, what weapons to make when you've run out of your ammunition. Amen. It gave you everything, how to, how, how to build a shelter. It gave you everything you needed in that manual to survive in the wilderness. Honey, we're in the wilderness right now. Amen. God's given you a field manual. That's his word of God. That's the law. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Who makes your way prosperous? I do. I do. Who gives you good success? I do. You do that. We're waiting on God to prosper us. We're waiting on God to make us successful. And he's told you all you got to do is follow the field manual. And you'll eat good, you'll live good, you have every weapon you need to defend against every enemy, and you'll be able to attack him, that enemy and get back everything he's ever stole from you. That's what it's all about. You gotta use this. You gotta follow this. He's blessing you with everything you need. Courage. It's mental or moral strength to venture, to persevere, and withstand danger, fear, and difficulties. And I'm sorry, don't tell me that somebody in here this week has not dealt with, pers had to persevere, has not had some type of danger, fear, and difficulty. I guarantee you, everybody in here that dealt with a little bit of some of that. Yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah. And trust me, you need courage to overcome every last one of these things. Mental and moral strength allows you to stand in the midst of all of that and call upon the God of your salvation to strengthen you and help you to make it through. We talked last week about those personal battles that God expects you to fight and for you to win. He hasn't given you stuff for you to just put it down because you'd have been hurt. Drop your weapon and run like a scared rabbit when you'd have been shot. Enemy's got fiery darts. He's got fiery darts. He's got fiery darts. And he's going to shoot them every single day at you because he's got you in his crosshairs. You are his target. But the Bible told you that you got a shield of faith that can help block every last one of them. 
that faith and that courage. But you, you can have the shield of faith, but you ain't got the courage to lift it up. You're going to get shot. You need the courage to see it coming and know that you've got something that will deflect every last one of those. It takes courage. you got to do it. So Joshua must be the strength and courage of God to begin the task of leadership. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go into the process, go into process the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess. And to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke saying, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock will remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed, all your mighty men of valor, and help them. until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it which Moses the Lord's servants gave you on this time side of the Jordan towards the sunrise Amen. Amen. so they answered Joshua saying all that you command us we will do and wherever you send us we will go just as we heeded Moses in all things so we will heed you only the Lord your God will be with you as he was with Moses whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words and all that you command him shall be put to death only be strong and of good courage. See, we can't afford to even take people along with us that don't even want to follow God's word. Amen. Said they kill them. We are a strong group. We are a strong army. We have to be on one accord. I, the Holy Spirit came because they were all together in one place in one accord. They all had the same mindset. They all were waiting in one place with the one idea of waiting on the Holy Spirit to came. They were in one accord. As an army, as a group, as a church, we got to be on one accord. We cannot afford to allow things to come in and block God's word. It is never my goal ever at all to hurt anybody, but I am going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what God says to tell you. One thing I can tell you about me is, is I'm not that smart in order to be able to say I'm so theologically in a place to give you all kinds of... No, I want the Holy Spirit to speak through me to tell you exactly what you need to know. Because as a church, we got a job to do. Now, I'm not talking about Word for Life Worship Center. I'm talking about the Church of God. We've got to get together as one body of Christ and fight this enemy. Amen. That's why I keep trying to tell you, we're not fighting flesh and blood. we got to start targeting these spirits so that we can be overcomers of these spirits as a Church of God. He's coming back for a church without a spot, a spot without a blemish. He's coming back for a church that is on one accord, got one mind, and that's towards reaching the world for Christ. Spreading the good news, the gospel of Christ. We've been given orders, marching orders, to go forward, to go into all the world, or your sphere of influence. See, if you don't speak German, God's not sending you to Germany. <laughs> if you don't speak Japanese, God's not sending you to Japan. 
If you don't speak Spanish, don't jump on no plane going down to Mexico and think you're going to be a, 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 a missionary. God's not giving you that. Not when you got family members, co-workers, neighbors in your sphere of influence who you've never touched. Who you've never given the word of God to. Who you've not lived a life of Christianity in front of. Ooh, so now you're starting to meddle. That's your world that he's telling you to go into first and foremost. Once you've met them, then he can feel free to take you other places. I don't see him sending you halfway around the world when your brother and your sister's on their way to hell because you have not met them Amen. at the point of their need in witnessing that Jesus Christ is them. Why would he allow you to let your family members burn when you try to help somebody else? It don't work like that. God's given you everything you need. And just because you're wounded don't mean you can't get back in the fight because you've got to every single time. So let's talk about two wounded warriors. There were two. First, we want to talk about King David. David was an adulterer and he was a murderer. Think about Bathsheba and Uriah. If you haven't read the story, don't know about the story. David was obsessed with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was married to Uriah. David caused Uriah to die so that he could have Bathsheba. He was not only just an adulterer, but he killed the man she was married to. Can you think of anything worse than that? That's pretty low. Matter of fact, I got a real low. I had a low down dirty, downright despicable. But God knew the heart of David. And we find that he was yet was become one of Israel's greatest kings. In Acts 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised him up unto them, David to be their king, to whom also he gave their territory and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. He called David a man after his own heart. That's, that's very impressive. In regards to the sin he had done, now, this is rhetorical. You don't have to answer. Matter of fact, I prefer you don't. What sin have you done? That God can still say, you are a child after his own heart. Can he, does he look beyond your faults and see your abilities? Yes, he does. He did that before you were even formed in your mother's womb because he sent Jesus Christ to give his life for your sin. Yeah, before you was even a twinkle in your daddy's eye, he died for you. And he saw, even in the midst of your sin, when you were in the, your darkest state, he still had a love for you, knowing that he was going to give a sacrifice for each and every one of you. So that when you get wounded, when you're in the middle of a fight, when you get knocked down, he's giving you every opportunity to get back up and get back in the fight. Then we want to talk about Peter. Now everybody knows about Peter. Peter was a hot head. Peter talked too much. Peter was, a, he, he was, he was very rebellious. I like Peter. I like Peter too. I think more of us are like Peter than we want to even imagine. Because <laughs> yep. we do so many things that we know are not what God wants us to do. Amen. But Peter was a coward. And he denied Christ. He didn't just do it once. He did it three times. But yet he became a great apostle of Christ. But this is what Jesus told him before Jesus was even led away to his death. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith 
fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. See, he knew Peter was going to fall. As a matter of fact, he told him, you're going to deny me three times. Satan wants you. Satan wants your life. He wants to separate you from everything that I've got in store for you. He says, I want to pray that your faith doesn't fail. When you are converted or when you have been recovered or when you come back to me, I want you now to turn around and I want you to strengthen your brothers because you're going to see how much my love overcomes your disobedience, your cowardice, and your betrayal. Amen. And we do that to Christ. We betray him all the time. But he has prayed that your faith doesn't fail. He's prayed that your courage doesn't uh, run away from you. He's prayed that you will be able to stand in the midst of every problem, every situation, and every circumstance. So that you can be an overcomer. Victories come to those who can endure to the end. See, not every race is given to the fastest runner and it's not given to the strongest in battle but it's given to those who can endure to the end every one of your situations every one of your circumstances God has given you strength to battle he's telling you to be strong and be courageous don't give up the fight stand when you can't feel you can stand anymore, you've got to stand. Romans 8, 35 to 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or trouble, shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, all those things that come against you to knock you down? There's one thing that really bothers me that I hear from time to time. And that's that God don't love me no more. Where did it come from? He's saying here, what's going to separate you from the love of Christ? Any of these things? For your sake we are killed all day long. All day long is a part of you that's being knocked down, drug out, drug through the mud, talked about, let you down, not strengthening you. There's some things that are knocking you around all day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. That's how the enemy sees you as just a dumb sheep. <clears throat> Worthy to be put, knocked down, served up on a plate, and some lamb chops with some gravy and biscuits on the side. <laughs> it's Sunday, so I know y'all hungry, so don't worry about it. <laughs> But that's how the enemy sees you. As nothing but sleep to be knocked off. Yet in all these things, he says you are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There ain't nothing. Nothing. No thing can separate you from the love of God. You may not feel love, but he loves you. The only reason why you ain't feeling love is because the enemy has weighed so much pressure upon you. You're being wounded and you're caring more about the wound than the fight. Amen. Jesus. Don't care about the wound. Think about the fight. Think about what comes at the end of the fight. That's God's treasure, his blessings. He already said, you're more than a conqueror. That means you're not only going to give back your stuff, but other people's stuff who have decided that they don't want it no more. How many of y'all are thrift store people? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves that. And you'll find many of treasures of people who just discard the stuff because they don't want it no more. 
Fresh stuff. And good stuff. Mm -hmm. God's got treasures in store for you in places you haven't even looked for yet. Amen. You haven't even thought about yet. They are waiting for you to pick it up. The problem is you have been wounded and you don't know that you got to get back in the fight. Amen. See, you can't win if you don't fight. Amen. True. You can't win if you don't fight. Amen. You got to fight. We need one another. We need each other for courage, for support, and for prayer. We need to be praying for one another like we've never prayed before. And the thing is, is this, you don't need to know what somebody else is going through. You just need to know that they need your prayer. Amen. You just need to know that somebody is on your side lifting you up before the Lord so that you can make it through every single day. Because that's what he wants for you, for you to be an overcomer. You need it. Encouragement, support, and prayer. That's why if I don't see you for a week or two, you know, you expect your, your, your phone to ring, expect a text, expect something from me. Because I'm telling you now, I'm praying for you. I understand many things happen. Many things come up and we don't always make every single time. I, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't think about it. We ain't come to church today. There's something wrong with a nope. Everybody got something. But be it known. You are on my heart. Pastor Michelle and I, we are praying for you all. When we don't see you, we, we just lift you up before the Lord. Okay, Lord, they didn't hear this word today, but send the word through some means that they can get the word so that they can be blessed. Amen. We're sending the word to you by God. One way or another, because we want you encouraged. It's our job to encourage you. Our job to support you. Our job to pray for you. I don't care what it is you're going through. You are an overcomer through the word of God. When you do it the way God tells you to, you're going to make it. James, last scripture, 5, 13 to 15, says, if anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. That's a problem. We don't want to pray. The enemy wants to keep you from praying. Amen. The Bible says many times before, we don't know how to pray. Or we don't know what we ought to pray for. That's when you go to your tongues. And you allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you. Sometimes it's just a groan. Mm. I'm not telling you, you guys to always say things verbally. But you have to be in a moment and in a time and in an atmosphere of prayer. Because God wants to hear from you. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. And people that are happy, you need to spread the happiness around. Because not everybody's happy. People need your smile. People need your blessing. People need your hug. People need your tenderness. People need your laughter. It's the joy of the Lord that is my strength. You're supposed to be singing. Sing. Till you can't sing no more. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I don't have a problem with anybody asking me to pray for them because you're sick. I'm a firm believer. This is just me. Don't ever be sick and then turn around and say, oh, I ain't sick. I don't believe in that. I'm sick, but I know where to get my healing. I'm sick, but I know God's going to heal me. I'm sick, but I know I got help coming on the way. So you just don't leave it at I'm sick. That's just like you just got shot. You're wounded. Oh, I'm wounded. No, I'm wounded, but I know my healing is coming so I can get back up and get back in the fight. Amen. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. I want you to understand that. I, I, it's the word of God. And that, that little word, if, kind of sometimes bothers me. And I don't believe in changing the word of God. But I do want to say, when you have committed a sin, 
The Bible also says if any man says he has not sinned, he's a liar, the truth ain't him. So when you commit a sin, he's telling you you're going to be forgiven. You don't have to confess all of me and tell me every little thing you've done. That's not my job. But you sure need to let God know, Lord, I have done such and such, and I sure forgive. I need your forgiveness, Father. If he is given. He said in his word that he will be just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from your unrighteousness. This is what he wants to do for you. You have not ever been wounded and never go for care. They've got these, uh, you know, the emergency rooms are open 24 hours a day, but they've got these, what are they called, urgent care centers. There we go. Many clinic. <laughs> Cost your arm two, three legs to go to them things. <laughs> but they are available for you when you can't get nowhere else. The church is an urgent care. Michelle and I are urgent care. We're many clinics. You need us, we're there for you. It's our job to lay hands on you. It's our job to take you before the Lord. It's our job to intercede for you when you can't intercede for yourself. That's what we do. I promise you, we're going to bless you and give you what you need. That's the word of God. Amen. So that you can be strong and you can be courageous. Never give up the fight. You can't afford to give up the fight. You've got to fight this fight every day, all day. Like I said it last week. God told me, you keep telling him to fight until I see him really fighting. Not only when I see them fighting, when I see them victorious, when I see them winning, then I'm going to give you something else to preach. So if you're tired of hearing about fighting, evidently, you ain't won yet. <laughs> and I don't have a problem helping you win the fight. Because trust me, I'm in a fight. There's not one word that comes out of this mouth to give to you that I don't need myself. Because i got to be victorious over every situation and circumstance, just like you. God wants you strong. God wants you courageous. God wants you victorious. And God wants you a winner. Amen? Amen. Amen.